Hi, it's Bruna. Welcome to my video on ImageNet. If you're interested in data science and want to learn more about the significance of ImageNet and its applications in the field of computer vision, this video is for you. Throughout this video, we'll explore the structure of ImageNet and discuss its implications for training and evaluating deep learning models. Moreover, we'll examine the challenges and considerations associated with working with ImageNet, including issues of bias, diversity, and modern transferability. So, what exactly is ImageNet? Let's find out. ImageNet is a massive dataset of labeled images serving as a playground for training and testing computer vision models. Developed by researchers at Stanford University, it has become a cornerstone in the area of image recognition. The dataset consists of over 14 million images with approximately 21,000 categories and over 1 million images have bounding boxes annotations. The image database is organized according to the WordNet hierarchy. We could describe WordNet as a semantic network where words are interconnected based on their meanings. Each category in ImageNet corresponds to a specific theme set in WordNet, establishing a link between the visual concept and the linguistic semantics. They are building blocks of the ImageNet hierarchy. To be more concrete, at the top of the hierarchy, there are general categories, for example, animal, plant, or object. As we descend into the hierarchy, categories become more specific. For instance, under animal, you might find the subcategories carnivore or dog. At the bottom, we have highly specific categories that correspond to individual objects or concepts. These are the labels associated with the images in the dataset. For example, golden retriever or husky. The images in ImageNet are typically stored as separate files rather than blobs. Each image is typically stored as an individual file, usually in a common image format such as JPEG or PNG. Storing images as separate files allows for easier access, manipulation, and analysis. As for the labels, they are typically stored in a structured format, often in a separate file or database associated with each image. Researchers at Princeton and Stanford created the database in 2009 by collecting photos from websites like Flickr. These images covered a wide range of categories, including animals, objects, the scenes, and more. They first selected a set of object classes using the WordNet hierarchy and asked different search engines to obtain a pool of candidate images. These candidate images were then verified by human annotators that worked for mechanical turn. Annotators were shown images retrieved for a specific class label and were asked to select the ones that were actually containing an image of this class. Only images that multiple annotators validated ended up in the final dataset. ImageNet has played a pivotal role in the development of deep learning, particularly convolutional neural networks. Here are some key aspects of ImageNet's impact on the field. ILSERC stands for ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge, and since 2010, the dataset has been used in this contest, a benchmark in image classification and object detection. The publicly released dataset contains a set of manually annotated training images. A set of test images is also released, with the manual annotations withheld. The challenge dataset annotations fall into one of two categories. First one, image level annotation of a binary label for the presence or absence of an object class in the image. For example, there are cars in this image, but there are no dogs. Second is object level annotation with a tight bounding box and class label around an object instance in the image. For example, there is a dog centered at position 2025 with width of 50 pixels and height of 30 pixels. Some popular deep learning architectures such as AlexNet, PTD, and ResNet were developed and benchmarked using the ImageNet dataset. In the 2012 ILS VRC, the deep learning model known as AlexNet, based on CNN architecture, achieved a remarkable breakthrough. It significantly outperformed traditional computer vision approaches, marking a turning point in the field. The success of AlexNet 
demonstrated the effectiveness of deep learning in image classification tasks. Working with ImageNet offers several advantages, making it a popular and valuable resource for researchers. First of all, it's a massive dataset, consisting of millions of images on a wide range of categories. This diversity allows to train models on a rich and diverse set of visual concepts. Second, ImageNet has served as a benchmark for evaluating image classification models. The ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge competitions have driven the development of a state of the art techniques, leading to a significant advancement in the field. Third, models retrained on ImageNet can be used as a starting point for different tasks through transfer learning. In transfer learning, a model trained on one task is adapted or transferred to perform a different but related task. So instead of starting the learning process from scratch, it uses the knowledge gained from solving one problem to improve performance on a different but related problem. Basically, the neural network model learns convolution masks from ImageNet, which are used as a starting point. This can be applied later to other computer vision tasks using minimal modification. Fourth, retrained models on ImageNet, like the ones based on architectures like AlexNet, DigiGNet, and ResNet, and others, are easily available. These models can be used for various applications, saving time and computational resources. First, ImageNet has been criticized for biases and lack of diversity in its content. The dataset might not represent certain demographics, cultures, or religions in an adequate way. Also, because of the way the images were originally acquired, it might contain personal information taken without consent, and ImageNet does not own the copyright of the images in the database. ImageNet content is fixed at the time of its creation, and it can reflect evolving trends, technological advancements, or changes in societal context. This static nature can limit the dataset's relevance over time. Also, it mainly focuses on object recognition, which might not capture the broader context of the themes or concepts. For example, let's suppose we have an image containing a person holding a tennis racket and standing on a tennis court. In ImageNet, the focus is primarily on object recognition, so the labels might include person and tennis racket. However, the dataset might not capture the broader context of the scene such as the fact that the person is engaged in a game of tennis on a tennis court. Without contextual information, a model trained on ImageNet may correctly identify the person and tennis racket but may struggle to understand the overall context of the scene, including the activity being performed, in this case, tennis match, and the environment, a tennis court. However, there is also one other concern with the dataset. Real-world images often contain multiple objects of interest. ImageNet notations are limited to assigning a single label to each image, which can lead to a big underrepresentation of the content of an image. As we said before, annotators were asked to select the images that belonged to said class. They were not asked to provide the image level, but to verify a specific label. They had no idea of what the other classes of the dataset might be or how much of the image an object had to occupy to determine a class. This can lead to imperfect annotations. For instance, in these images, we can see that an image that an average person would label with context as church, tools, or wind instrument has been reduced to altar, hammer, and trombone, although there appear other instruments or utensils. ImageNet is publicly available, and you can download the dataset from the official ImageNet website. The dataset is quite large so make sure you have sufficient storage space. It requires about 150 gigabytes of space to store the training dataset. Also, it takes a long time to train a model, since the dataset is so extensive. One powerful way to use ImageNet is through transfer learning. Pre-trained models on ImageNet can be fine-tuned on your specific task or dataset. This is beneficial if you have a smaller dataset for a specific domain. It is easier to access and use pre-trained models on ImageNet without training the model yourself. Many pre-trained models on ImageNet are available for use. For example, models like DGG16, ResNet, or Inception are widely used and can be easily loaded and adapted for specific tasks. 
deep learning frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch provide these pre-trained models. To sum up, ImageNet has played a crucial role in advancing computer vision, particularly in the development of convolutional neural networks. Its massive dataset and challenges, such as the ImageNet Largest Scale Visual Recognition Challenge, have driven progress in image classification. From the emergence of AlexNet in 2012 to next architectural advancements like VVGNet and ResNet, ImageNet has been instrumental in benchmarking and shaping the state-of-the-art models. Beyond academia, it has practical implications in different real-world applications. Although we recognize challenges like the bias and diversity, ImageNet remains a foundational resource, contributing to ongoing research and collaboration in the fields of computer vision. So we reach the ending of this introduction. Thank you for exploring the characteristics of ImageNet with me in today's presentation.